everybody, you're watching BET's What's at Stake. I'm Mark Lamont Hill. We're here at Red Rooster in Harlem, and we're talking about violence in the community. I'm joined by an amazing panel. My name is Mac Wilds, and I'm an artist and a youth advocate. Sean Duke McFadden. I am the executive director and founder of a nonprofit organization that deals with gun violence. I am David Johns, and I'm the executive director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence. Corey Jackson. I'm a youth mentor leader at Friends of Violent Academy. One of the things I wanted to do in this conversation, because we all grew up in different types of neighborhoods, is get a little bit of our stories. I mean, Corey, I want to start with you. Growing up, just dealing with the violence, I went to school in, up in Washington Heights. I had to fight every day because one race didn't like each other. That's just what it was back then. Like, I have to become that soldier on the field to make sure my safety is maintained, because at the end of the day, I got to learn how to protect myself. What was your experience like? Because now you've gone from being someone in involved in violence to someone who's committed to stopping it. Was respected for being violent. I was loved by the ladies for being violent. E everything came with it. I got money for being violent. I remember getting incarcerated 16 years old, Rikers Island. It was the war zone. Nothing but black and Hispanic men predominantly yelling and screaming. I just like, oh, we animals in here. I know what I got to do to change myself, and now I got to use that voice. I got to take that and show our kids, show our people to be the leaders that we want to be, because they got to change. I grew up at a time where being smart wasn't the cool thing, right? And I was the kid whose mother put him on a bus to go to a school an hour away, so I didn't have to deal with that. But the sad reality is that I wasn't immune to it, right? None of us are, no matter what community we live in, what kind of family we have, whether it's nuclear or not. Growing up, you kind of start to accept the mind state of that like a warrior, you know? It's like you're in a constant war zone. The guy that you was just chilling with on the block or whatever, the next day he could be gone, and you just have to pick up and keep moving. Like, you gotta keep going on with the war. The war's not over, you know? It's another day, it's another dollar. And that war zone is just like you got your military, you got your Marines, right? Mm. You got your army. Yeah. And that's why, that's why young people join gangs, join Cusco, join crews, because it's a war zone. If you're gonna be the predator, you're gonna be the prey, right? So the brother said, my mother put me in a bus an hour away. Why are your mother taking you out the hood? Now we see you as a weak one. Yeah, don't get it twisted, old brother. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Oh, he goes to school over there. That's, that's a brother's reason for us to look at you differently because you're going to a better school. That's, yeah. our, that's the state of mind about you. But it's almost like we accept that in our neighborhoods, you're going to get tested. And you got to go an hour away to get a good education and not get shot. And we all get tested in life, generally. I think the challenge is that we get tested in a certain way. And that's what I mean. I mean, the consequences of, our of the test is that we could, we could end up dead. Let us know what's at stake for you. Go to BET.com slash what's at stake and tweet us at what's at stake. The third leading cause of death from young men 10 to 24 is homicide. Yeah, sadly, in the time that we will have spent talking today, uh, some of our brothers will have died and their blood will be in the streets right now. It's us first. It's our state of mind. It's our mentality. It's what we've been bred to really live like, to, to, to adjust to, to accept. The sad reality is that in too many of our communities across this country, too few of us have opportunities, the kind of opportunities that lead to lives that don't involve violence or living in communities with prolonged exposure to poverty. One of the things, Mac, that's happening is that our culture also plays a role in this. What we see on TV and music we listen to. Television, movies, and all of that has a huge impact on the way people act and, and do what they do. Because a lot of people still nowadays, they, they come to me like, I swear, y'all want to be just like Mike. And I'm like, listen, understand. <laughs> Did you watch that? <laughs> <laughs> understand. <laughs> right. Understand there's a difference. Like, you know, Mike is, Mike is a, a strong-headed kid. He did what he had to do. I think that's an important point. What I liked about The Wire was that it wasn't just, you know, these kids who were bad or these kids who were wildin'. It was these kids who were born in the circumstances that were jacked up. Mac just said it, right? Young boy was doing it because he had to. The question is, if you had different options and different opportunities, would you make the same decisions? And often, we're in spaces where we don't have the resources. We don't have the opportunities. We don't have high-quality programs to put our babies in so that they're not on the corner. How would having access to more resources been helpful for you? I used to do a lot of acting, and that was deterring me away from keeping myself in the streets. Once, you know, the money stopped coming, you really start to see how an underfunded school can affect so many children. So that's why I'm glad we're having this conversation, brothers, because we're talking about both pieces of this, right? Sometimes people say, you have to make different choices. I don't care what's going on in the world. Just don't choose violence. Everything is that. So how do you say don't choose that? If you're a five-year-old and everything you see is violence, how do I see anything else that's acceptable? So the president stood in the middle of the White House in front of a group of black boys from Chicago and said it's a sad reality that every day our kids are dying 
and the saddest thing is that we're numb to it. You're so used to it, you're just desensitized to the fact that another life has just been lost. It's, it's crazy, like yeah. I'm doing 902 and 0, right? Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm on set and one of my homeboys passed away. And I'm talking about it like, dang, you know, like I was just in the hood with him just like right before I came to set, the set in the third, and they're just like, oh my God, are you okay? Right, right. I'm like, yeah, we, I'm good, you know. Pay, we gotta get back to work. Like, you're not gonna that, grieve, you're make, not gonna pause, yeah, you're not gonna deal with it. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. We, we're, just, we're just built up differently. Like, we're, we're built up that this is literally the norm. This is our regular, everyday occurrence. Right. Let us know what's at stake for you. Go to BET.com slash what's at stake and tweet us at what's at stake. White kids want to dress like us. And when they do, they don't get shot. They just don't. And they don't grow up with their friends dying all the time. And that's the other piece of this. I think there's trauma attached to this. You talked about war zone before, and you talked about war zone before. When soldiers come home from war, we try to treat them for PTSD, right? We try to treat them for the trauma of being at war, and they go away for six months. If you, from the age that. you're born to 18, are surrounded by that, all your friends dying, it's untreated trauma. We don't, that's, we don't that's, do it. That's yeah. what we're advocating for in the work that we do. Post-traumatic is a fact. It's a mental condition that we're dealing with. You got to condition your mind. The mind has been conditioned, as we spoke about, from a child, from a baby. So now, if, if, I, if I'm used to everybody getting shot, then like I said, a shooting to me is nothing. That can't be healthy, right? That when we watch Oh, it's TV, the exact opposite. What'd you say? It's the exact opposite of healthy. It's, right. ex yeah. it's the exact, it's the exact opposite, opposite of healthy. Right? Yeah. We can't be around these kids every day. But bigger than just us trying to find the creative ways, we. It, we have to really change our communities. Accountability on everybody's part. Absolutely. In order to try and deter something, you have to think about it in a sociological aspect. There's something called theory of deviance, in which a continued or patterned behavior that's learned on is continuously passed on to another generation. And to even assess the fact of stopping it, we have to at least do something about it. Before we go, I want to ask y'all this. What can we do, what can the people watching BET do to make this thing better. This is why the president established My Brother's Keeper Initiative, right? Because it's not only important to get resources, but it's also important to acknowledge that the reality that has existed doesn't have to be that way. If you give them access to training and resources, they won't be on the street. You got the people who got the experience, like the people who sit down and, and, and their minds are aware of it. And you got those kids who don't even know what's going on yet. You gotta really put attention into them. You gotta, you gotta get them away from all the stuff that's happening and start getting them towards these resources. Keep them out of the streets, whether we're giving them the educational opportunities, academic or social opportunities. We got to find something to help breed and continue this generation of self-growth. That's going to help the community out. Amen. Let us know what's at stake for you. Go to BET.com slash what's at stake and tweet us at what's at stake. Hello, my name is Corey Jackson. I'm broadcasting major at CUNY Kingsborough, and I'm an up-and-coming filmmaker. Growing up, I had the chance to experience life from those who are involved in the streets and those who aren't, which gave me a balanced view on life and made me motivated to do the things I love to do. If I had one piece of advice to give to myself knowing what I know now, it would be to never settle or dumb yourself down just to appeal to one crowd. Growing up, you kind of start to accept the mind state of that like a warrior, you know? It's like you're in a constant war zone. Like, I have to become that soldier on the field to make sure my safety is maintained, because at the end of the day, I got to learn how to protect myself. If you're a five-year-old and everything you see is violence, how do I see anything else that's acceptable? It's a sad reality that every day our kids are dying, and the saddest thing is that we're numb to it. White kids want to dress like us, and when they do, they don't get shot. We have to at least do something about it. You can't just say, all right, pull up your pants. My humanity shouldn't be tethered to how I look. It should just be a given. 